Earlier this morning, the house started shaking. Not quite that much. Okay, let's go with that. I turned to my wife and asked, Earthquake? As the vibrations died down, I sent this tweet. Immediately, a ton of responses. Within minutes, there was information. The epicenter had been somewhere in New Jersey. People posted links to seismology websites and graphs. Looking at this, it looks just like a sound file I might come across in my work. And I immediately wondered what it would sound like. So I've decided to do a bit of digging. This website looks useful. I guess each one of these is a different measurement site. There's a list of sensor names at the bottom, and I can click through on any of them to see more data. There's also a link to something called the EarthScope Data Center. It seems to be some sort of database that I can query to get specific data. I'm going to click on one of these sample queries. <laughs> it just downloaded some file to my hard drive. <laughs> no idea what that is. Let's check it out. Okay, so the file it downloaded has the extension mseed. Let's try to find some more information about that file type. Okay, so this seems to be a page describing the data format. It links to a programming library called libmseed. I'm hoping it's going to allow us to read that data and then turn it into a WAV file. I'm going to download that library, and I'm also going to start a brand new console project. I'm going to call it mseed to wave. Okay, about an hour has passed, and I've got myself a quick and dirty converter. To run it, I'm going to use the terminal. I just type mseed to wave, and then the location of that mseed file. Okay, all those numbers that just appeared, that's the data that was in the file. And if we go back to the folder, we can see that it just generated a little wave file. Let's hear it. Whoa, that is really cool, actually. Remember, that's not the New Jersey earthquake. That's just some random data that that database spat out. Speaking of which, let's actually try to grab some of the data from this morning's earthquake. One of the links that people had shared on Twitter was this. As you can see, it even has a tool that will let you listen to the waveform. Unfortunately, it sounds pretty bad. I think part of the reason it sounds so terrible is that it seems to have picked a sensor in Texas. Let's try to find something closer. This tool should show us all of the sensors that are available. For some reason, they all disappeared when I zoomed in. But if I look down below, I can see the actual list. It says no data. The next one also says no data. I'm just going to keep clicking, and hopefully one of these will be a functional sensor. Hey, look at that, finally. I'm going to click the downloadable image link here. In addition to my utility, I've made a little script that will download data based on these URLs. All I need to do is copy and paste this URL into my terminal window. Okay, it's downloading the data right now. Now it's going to convert it. And this is what resulted. That's this morning's earthquake. Kind of sounds like somebody clapping their hands. Or maybe hitting a sheet of metal. Let's hear it again. Of course, the way it sounds is very much a reflection of the time compression. The data I've pulled represents about 7,800 seconds in real-world time, but in the WAV file, it's sped up, so it only takes about 8 seconds to listen to it. If we choose a different factor, it sounds very different. Either way, quite a serviceable percussive sound. I'm going to try to pull some data for other earthquakes now. The USGS maintains this wonderful website where you can get a picture of all the seismic activity that's happening around the world. Because I don't necessarily want to be making music using sounds from truly catastrophic events, I'm going to stick to the lower end of the Richter scale for this project. A week has passed. For the last few days, I've done nothing but pull seismographic data. There's something so addictive about it. Each time I get a new file, I convert it, and then listen back to the results. Some of them are just textures, but others are more percussive. I've gathered 22 of my favorite percussive samples and put them into a decent sampler instrument. Which, like the data on which it's based, is available for free. As you can see, there's sort of a color spectrum. Each of these controls above corresponds to a key down below. You can control the tuning, decay, and volume for each of the quakes independently. All in all, I think these sounds will be really useful in a cinematic context. So remember how I said that many of the sounds that I'd pulled weren't actually percussive? 
things like this. Well, I've been thinking about how I might be able to take some of these textures and turn them into useful melodic samples. I'm going to try two techniques. As you can see, I've got a sample pulled up here. And I've got a free EQ plugin from Melda called M Equalizer turned on. We can see that the sample has a bunch of frequencies in the 100 to 500 hertz range. I'm just going to pick an arbitrary frequency and we're going to create a spike. Essentially, all we're doing is over accentuating this one frequency. One of the great things about this plugin is that it has a harmonics control. I'm going to turn that up. It's subtle, but do you hear the pitch starting to emerge? I'm going to get rid of some of the low frequencies, just so we have less rumble. Okay, let's export this out and see how it sounds as an instrument. Oh, it's quite nice. Okay, let's move on to our second technique. In this folder, I've got a bunch of different samples. Random notes, mostly from plucked instruments. I'm just going to choose one randomly and load it into Reaper. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, cool. It's two notes, actually. So next, I'm going to pull up Reaper's built-in reverb plugin. This thing is actually a convolution engine. Convolution is a great way to reproduce the sound of a real-world space, like a concert hall or a cavern. So in general, you're supposed to use this plugin in conjunction with specially prepared impulse responses. But my thought is, what if we were to use seismic textures instead? I'm just going to load one in and see what happens. Kind of cool. Let's export it out and try it as a sample-based instrument. Oh, that's very cool. There's something about having the two notes stuck in there. When you're composing with it, the result is always a little bit surprising. I'm going to save these clusters of notes so that I can use them later. Okay, so I've now taken my favorite pads and packaged them up. Those will be included with the other sample libraries from before. There's a link in the description to this video. I'm going to try playing one of these pads over the sounds I had recorded earlier. I think I'm actually going to try to pull in another copy of that chimey loop, and I'm going to pitch it up an octave. I kind of like this. All in all, I've learned a ton from this project. For starters, since we almost never get earthquakes in Philadelphia, I actually had no idea there was a fault line under New Jersey. I also learned that there's a vast network of seismology data collection sites that are all networked and publicly available. Even though a lot of the sensors are offline at any given time, it's still the coolest thing ever. And it was just a nice bonus to find that a lot of the signals can be turned into musically useful sounds. The code I wrote for this project is now on GitHub. Given that it's a command line tool, it's probably not for the faint of heart. As it happens, I've discovered another way of pulling audio data that's a bit more user-friendly, so I'll probably do a blog post explaining how to pull that data. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time. I've got a bunch of new videos on the way. Another great way to support this channel is by joining the Patreon. It costs just $5 a month, and every month you'll get an exclusive sample library just for patrons. The last one was a Solar42 sample library, which I used to make the intro music for this video. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.